Hey there guys, Ryan here. So today I'm gonna to cover some of the key topics I wish I had known back in my flight training days, back from 2009 to 2013, that would have helped save me not only a lot of money, but a lot of time. I'm gonna go ahead and start this video off with apologizing for what I'm wearing. I'm about to go to the gym. I just got back from my Christmas break in, in uh, Missouri, and it's been kind of a long day, so uh, not a lot of time, so this is gonna to have to do. So I'll go ahead and start this video off after that with how much it's gonna cost. I wish I had known how much flight training was gonna cost before I started, because you see a bunch of funky calculators and stuff on universities and uh, on their website stuff. They'll tell you, well, it costs this much per hour and this much per class and all, all that, yada, 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 yada. But you don't know really how to calculate that. What I found, now keep in mind, this was from 2009 to 2013. I graduated in May of 13. So this may be outdated information, but my four-year degree cost approximately $100,000. That was for the four-year degree and all the flying from basically zero to hero, all the way from a student pilot to flight instructor. So that may be a little more, maybe a little less, it just depends. But I found that was pretty average. Some of my friends had a little bit less money and some had a little bit more money that they owed. Some had a lot more, it just depends on how motivated you are and uh, how much you stick to the plan that the, that the school has laid out for you. Um, planning ahead really helps, planning out those classes and making sure you don't have to stay any extra semesters. So that's approximately what it's gonna cost. You can expect to pay approximately $100,000. Now there's things you can do to reduce this cost and the biggest one that I cannot stress enough is getting started early. If you're watching this video and you're in high school and you really are passionate about aviation and you want a career as a pilot, you want to start now. Now I know it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but it's gonna cost even more in the long run if you don't start now. So what I suggest you do is go to a local airport and, and find a flight instructor. Try to get at least your private pilot knocked out before you get to college. If I could go back in time, I would've got my private instrument and commercial because that would've saved me so much time. Not only do you come into college already knowing what's going on and you're already a commercial pilot, but you can start working on flight instructor, your CFI, pretty much right away and you don't have to rush through it and you'll become a flight instructor, start building your hours, and the second your four year degree is done, you'll likely have all your hours and get out to the airlines or wherever you wanna go for that matter. So starting early is definitely a big thing. The way to do that is you'll wanna to go to your local airport, just any of them near your, near your uh, house, and there will likely be a flight school there, or at least a local flight instructor, and just ask around, hey, do you teach? If so, how much does it cost me per hour? Try to find good competitive rates and, uh, and just, just get started early as soon as you can. Um, another thing you can do, and now this is only for really for um, instrument training, is get flight sim on your computer, the flight simulator games. Now you can get it for private, but it, it really won't help you that much because you don't really know what's going on with the airplane. Once you get into instrument training, it really helps you kind of understand how to do approaches and, and holds and arcs and all that kind of stuff. But until you get to your instrument, it's really not going to help you that much. So I'd suggest getting flight sim once you get to the instrument training phase of your, uh, of your training. Um, one thing I really wish I had known as well is once I got out of college, I had X amount of dollars that I owed and I wanted like how, like I didn't really know how much that I was going to owe each month on that, on that amount whenever I was going through school. I wish I had known so I could have kind of planned ahead. What I found to be pretty, um, pretty accurate is you take the total amount you owe and you basically just knock off a few digits at the end. So for example, let's say you owe $50,000 and it's time to start paying back your loans. Every month you can expect to pay $500. If you owe $75,000, you can expect to pay about uh, $750 and so on. So if you owe 100 grand, about a thousand bucks a month. So really the best thing you can do is plan early. Again, getting started early, whatever you can do to help decrease that total amount of $100,000 at the end is gonna help you significantly because $100,000 per month is hard to do. I graduated, I, ha I saved myself $30,000 throughout my, my course of college, and the link is gonna be right here to kind of explain, I've got another video that explains how I got out of college without owing as much as, like significantly less than everyone else that I graduated with. So follow those tips to help you get out with less money owing, because it's not easy. Even 700 bucks a month kind of suck paying. It's not easy at all. So. Um, definitely saving money as you go, but that's how that works. If you owe $20,000, again, about $200 a month is what you can expect to pay. Now that's a rough estimate. It will change based on how much percentage you owe, um, like how much percent of the uh, interest there is and stuff like that, but that's all complex, but that's, that's a good rough number. Um, plateaus, this is one thing that I wish I had known. 
Now, I don't know, some of you may not know what a plateau is, but a lot of you probably do. It's basically a stint in your, in your whatever you're doing. So let's say you are, a big one that people see this in is if you're a, like a gym buff, you go to the gym a lot, you will notice you'll start getting a lot of progress, a lot of progress, a lot of progress, and then boom, it just levels off for a set of time. And then after maybe a month or two, it'll start going back uphill, more progress, and then it levels off. That's a plateau. That will happen in your training, and just please stay motivated when this happens. The times that I noticed that uh, it either happened to me or my students, uh, plateaus, landing, learning how to land as a private pilot, or a student pilot rather, uh, a lot of people had plateaus there and they got really frustrated. And uh, in instrument training, a lot of times during either approaches, arcs, or holds. And to be honest with you, plateaus are a very big demotivation is what I've noticed from my, uh, my, my past students. They would hit these plateaus and kind of level off and stop wanting to meet because they got really hard on themselves. You know, they see they're not progressing. They only meet a couple days a week and they're not, they're not moving on. They're spending money they don't need to be spending. But just keep it in mind, it will happen to you, so don't get too upset by it. Now, don't let that hold you back and be like, oh, Ryan said I'll hit a, motiva uh, a plateau, so I just kind of, oh, just kind of float on by it. No, you will need to work hard to get over it, but don't let it drag you down too much. It does happen to everybody. But all in all, guys, right now, aviation is a fantastic time to be, to, to go into. If you're already in your training and you're already within a couple years of the airlines, you are in a fantastic spot. If you don't believe me, go look at any of the regional airlines. They're offering 10, 20, $30,000 sign-on bonuses per year. That's insane. That's more money than they used to be paying per year, a year before I started. Back in 2010, 11, 12, they were paying like $20,000 a year. And now their sign-on bonus is bigger than that. Plus you get X amount of dollars per year. It's just crazy. Once again, guys, I thank you for watching my video. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will answer them as best as I can or even make a video explaining it if I get enough, uh, enough people asking about it. But uh, for now, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, whatever. I'll see you guys next time.